Hey everybody, this is Aaron with GeoAce here for another tutorial uh, about QGIS in the field. So what we're going to be talking about today is something that is really kind of uh, exciting for me because I think it's often underused in the QGIS world. Um, and that's auto-populating the attributes of one layer based off of the spatial relationship to a different layer on creation. So um, this is gonna, we're gonna set it up in QGIS just like everything else. It's gonna carry right into Q field and we're gonna demonstrate both of those today. So this is what we're gonna be implementing. Uh, you can see that we have a new layer under zones and we have uh, our plants layer with two new fields. You can get the newest geo package from the link in the show notes. It's a GitHub link. So feel free to download the new geo package and you'll have those new fields in there for you. But uh, with regard to the functionality we're implementing, uh, the goal here is to take whenever you create a new feature, plants, a new plant, you click it in the polygon. Anytime that it overlaps one of these zones, it's auto-populated within your layer. So you can see now I just added this point. Uh, zone type park is already there and zone label walnut ridge park. And it's getting that from this newly created polygon. So just to show you that, that's right here. So you can see, just to select it, there you go. Uh, Walnut Ridge Park and uh, zone, or the zone type is park there. So in order to um, implement this, we're going to use QGIS, and then we're going to push it up to QField Cloud, and then we're going to pull it down to our iOS device, and uh, it should work just exactly the same on iOS, but I will demonstrate that at the end just to make sure that everything is good to go. So how do we actually do this? Well, it's not too hard. You just kind of have to know your way around the expressions a bit. Um, I'm going to turn off the one where I've implemented that auto population, and I'm going to turn on the set where I have not. In order to implement, you just go right click on Q field, form tutorials, plants, go to properties, and here are newly created fields. We're going to hit zone type first, and then we're not really concerned with any of this. You just go all the way down to the bottom, you go to defaults, apply default value on update. Very important, it won't work if you don't do that, but it'll give you a warning reminding you that you need to. And hit expressions expression builder i should say and the where all the magic happens the function that we're looking for here is overlay underscore intersects and um, as soon as you hit your first parenthesis you're going to get a little helper you can see that this particular function takes up to five parameters we're only going to be doing two today we're going to be doing layer and expression uh, so we're in our point layer now. We want to know what we're pulling attributes from. And so that's the polygon layer, which is zones. So in order to get that, it's pretty simple. You just go down to map layers. You double click on the layer that you want. In this case, it's zones. It doesn't really matter which one you pick because it's the same layer uh, in this case. And the second parameter, again, pretty straightforward, is um, type. And I do recommend if you have a bad memory like me, you can take a snapshot, you know, a screenshot of the field of the layer that you're looking to auto populate fields from. Um, in this case, I made them pretty simple, so I don't need to do that right now. And type, and that's it. Uh, you have an array. Now, this is still not going to work right out the gate. And the reason why is because this returns an array, it does not return a string, which is what. Um, we set our field as. So we have to do one more thing with this operation, and that's adding another kind of wrapper around it, and that's array to string. And we don't have to do anything else. We just have to put it in parentheses around this overlay intersects. And once you're done with that, you're good. It should work just fine, so long as you are adding a point within a polygon on this map. So we're going to hit OK. And we're going to rapid fire uh, do the next zone label. We're just, let's copy what we have here, paste it in here. And we need to make one small change since this is the label and not the type. Uh, we need to change our second parameter to our new field, which is label. OK. 
okay. And we're checking our box. See, there's that warning and saying, hey, it's not going to work unless you check this. Okay. And let's test. Going to the bottom. There you have it. Zone type park, zone label walnut rich park. Real quick note, you can make this a lot more complicated if you want to. Um, we just took a one for one attribute field, but you can calculate um, anything that you want based on that. You can, if it's an integer, you can do math and so on and so forth. So just something to know, this is the base level um, that what you'll you probably use the majority of the time, but it can be more complicated. The final thing that's left on the QGI side is literally we're just going to save the project. We are going to push it up to QField Cloud. You can see that it's detecting the changes. We're going to push that up and perform actions. And I will see you in iOS. All right, so we have officially downloaded this application or the QField document to our QField cloud. And I have already done the old long tap and um, re download. So I'm not going to make you all go through that again. Just to show you that it works, though, I'm going to click on Field Ops. You're going to see our recently created features, and we're going to add another one in. Let's go ahead and do that. We don't really care about location. We're going to go ahead. It needs, so this one, because of our previous tutorials, we have a required field on here. It's just the max height. We're just going to slide it up. You'll notice I didn't have it in QGIS because in QGIS it actually defaulted to zero. But anyway, uh, going to the bottom here, you can see zone type park and you can see Walnut Ridge Park. And we are all set to go. Um, we have demonstrated the functionality and I hope that this is uh easy to follow easy to implement and good luck collecting features in the future